What's our first hint that we're living in a period of historical change and challenge to the status quo? Brexit? Bankruptcy of Detroit? Puerto Rico? Junk bond status for Chicago? The ongoing collapse of the welfare state in Greece? The demise of the European Union? The U.S. presidential election? I don't see a government in the Western world, including Canada's, and certainly not groups like organized labor or those in charge of public education or the health care system, that gives any indication of understanding the nature of the changes. And sadly, the push isn't to adapt government to a changing world, it's to defend the status quo. The recent debates over the use of private care in our health care system is typical. No meaningful progress has been made in reducing wait lists. Nearly 45,000 Canadians were forced to leave the country to get treatment, and yet the response is to defend the status quo of no private care, a model that's been completely rejected in every country except North Korea. Canada's health care is ranked 16th in the latest Bloomberg Health Care Efficiency Index, and the response? defend the status quo. The immense financial pressures brought on by technological change and with the demands of an aging population are met with cries of, just say no to change. Federal Health Minister Jane Philpott's decision to maintain the Conservative government's federal health care funding model for the provinces is a recognition that money isn't the problem. Changes must be made. Efficiencies have to be found. Now, keep in mind, the billions more in federal and provincial funding haven't resulted in meaningful reductions in wait times. Sadly, it's not that they don't know how to do it. They just refuse to upset the status quo. My name is Mike Campbell. Join me Saturday for Money Talks.